Well, how's this for discipline? Three chapters in a week. Chapter three, the state as entrepreneur of my granddad's book, The State and Rule of Law in a Mixed Economy, written in 1970, published by, published by Stevens and Son. Sorry, published 1971. Whoops. Okay, the state as entrepreneur. State enterprise today is today a worldwide phenomenon. In the socialist centrally planned economies, semi-autonomous state corporations carry out all the major industrial, commercial and utility operations. At the other end of the scale, in the United States, federal public corporations such as the Tennessee Valley Authority or the Boulder Dam Authority control an important part of the nation's generation and distribution. In the various states of multitude of public authorities, operate in the various states a multitude of public authorities operate transport dams ports bridges waterways and other public utilities in the industrialized countries outside the centrally planned economies notably in britain france india and italy state enterprise constitutes a major sector of the national economy Generally, the trend is towards a growth of public sector, even in West Germany, which under the influence of the liberal market philosophy of formula Chancellor Erhard, has partly denationalized certain state enterprises such as Volkswagen Company by transferring part of the state holdings to the public. The federal government has recently taken a major, though so far indirect part in the reorganization and financial support of the West German oil and coal industries. In Italy, where state-owned enterprises play a major part in almost all sectors of economic life, the electric power industry has recently been nationalised. In Britain, after a series of successive nationalisations and denationalisations of the steel industry under the Labour and Conservative governments, the British Steel Corporation now controls most of Britain's steel making capacity. In India, the banking system has recently been transferred from private to public ownership joining steel and other basic industries, as well as life insurance. Oh, very interesting, not? I mean, it's not all meant to be fun. It's a legal book. Yeah, the need for planned economic development. Oh, and the reason I'm reading it, just in case you haven't watched any of the others, is to work out whether my granddad, Wolfgang Friedman, was left wing. Uh, because people who spoke at his funeral were on the McCarthy list. So I'm investigating uh, how many, you know, the, what, what it was like for academics on the McCarthy list. And I'm trying to understand what my granddad thought and what his positions were and if they were radical at the time. I can't read any more of it. Oh, OK, it's got a bit about South America here. The need for planned economic development in the new states has led to the constitution of a large number of state-owned development corporations designed to finance singly or in association with local capital or foreign investors needed economic development and to carry out the broad purpose of the national economic plan n national economic development plan in the older but also economically backward countries of latin america such development corporations as the cooperacion de fomento de chile or nacional financiera de mexico the, of Mexico have for many years played an important part in the simulation, stimulation and financing of industrial development. Whew. Reasons for the growth of public enterprise. What are the principal reasons for the growth of the entrepreneurial function of the state? If we leave aside the philosophy of the Soviet type economies, where semi-autonomous government corporations with separate accounting and legal personality are entrusted with the execution of the central plans and the operation of all but small-scale enterprise, four major motivations remain. One, the partial nationalisation of economic life through public enterprise, as carried out in Britain and France, and after the last world war through the nationalization of coal electricity gas rail atomic energy and air transport springs from the belief that such partial such partial transfer of economic life to the control of the state will provide a nucleus for the economic expansion of the nation and offer the advantages of large scale operation without the disadvantages of private monopoly at the same time, the constitution of these enterprises as separate public corporations is seen as providing an element 
of competitiveness and accountability and separation from the bureaucratized machinery of central government. There are certain functions regarded as vital for the na nation, which cannot or will not be assured by private enterprise. Notable examples have been the railways in the vast and un the populated countries such as Australia or Canada, or more recently the Tennessee Valley Authority in the United States. This great and enormously successful enterprise was established by the first Roosevelt administration after the Great Depression in order to rehabilitate a region which was economically backward and devastated by periodic flaws, floods and for which the powerful private power industry had failed to supply cheap electricity necessary for minimal, minimum rehabilitation. Over the years, the Tennessee Valley Authority has not only provided cheap electricity and a network of dams which have removed the danger of flooding, but it has reforested and in many other ways rehabilitated the entire region. State enterprise, three, state enterprise is the principal instrument by which countries that suffer from a deficiency of private venture capital can undertake vital national development tasks, usually within the framework of a long-term development plan. Four, a great deal of public enterprise in, in the mixed economies is not the outcome of planning or, or any long-term economic philosophy, but the product of emergency. It is in this way that after World War I, particularly in Germany, France and Italy, the state acquired ownership or majority control of numerous private enterprises which were failing, threatened widespread unemployment and economic stagnation. In Germany, in Germany, these state participations remain scattered and haphazard, although some of them, particularly in the field of electric power and minerals, have been combined in holding companies. In France, where many of these state participations persist, they have since the end of, the World War, end of World War II become part of a wider system of nationalization of basic industries. In Italy, the numerous and far-reaching participations of the state in all branches of industry have been organised and systemised in a number of state holding corporations, each of them controlling a vast number of operating companies in which public and private capital are usually associated. The two giant state corporations, ENI and IRI, I can't, I'm not going to say them, uh, control hundreds of companies that penetrate virtually all branches of, of the Italian economy, oil and gas exploration and refining, mining, metallurgy, mat metallurgy, shipbuilding, air and sea transport, banking insurance and the manufacture of a vast variety of products from petrochemical to automobiles. Recently, a third state holding corporation, NL, um, has been added as a result of the nationalization of the, elect uh, the electric power industry. Types of state enterprise. Can I do this now? Oh, yeah. The types of state enterprise reflect this great variety of purpose and activities. The entrepreneurial activities of the state are carried out in three legal forms. One, by departmental government enterprises, which have varying degrees of administrative and financial autonomy, by public corporations proper, i.e. autonomous legal entities under, the, under general ministerial direction, which are established by character or statute. Three, by commercial companies, which outwardly are likely, are like any other private enterprise and are governed by the appropriate civil and commercial codes or statutes, but in which the state or some other public authority holds a proportion of the shares varying from complete control to minor minority holding. Generally, the earlier types of state enterprise were concerned with utilities such as railroad, railways, postal services, electric power or, or forestry. Many of these are still operated by government departments, which often enjoy considerable administrative and budgetary autonomy. Among them are the Swedish Railway and Power Administration, the New Zealand Forestry Administration and the Belgium Regis de Telefone et Tele Telegram. Uh, in some countries, notably Germany, the basic public utilities such as the generation and distribution of electricity, water supply, or public transportation are operated within the general administrative structure by semi-autonomous regional or municipal establishments. Boring. Boring but necessary. 
Uh, but generally, the spread and diversification of public enterprise has brought a shift from the administration by government department to one by separate legal entities. With an organisation of their own and equipped with separate funds, for example, the postal and railway services of West Germany were reconstituted in the 1950s as semi-autonomous separate entities. The British Postal Service, historically a corporation sole, have, have recently been... A similar reorganisation of the patronage and... Oh... Uh, the British Postal Service, historically a corporation sole, have recently been converted into a separate crown corporation. A similar reorganisation of the patronage and de deficit-ridden United States Postal Administration as a separate state corporation was enacted in 1970 after years of obstruction due to the political patronage of con Congress over appointments and operations. Okay, and then I'm going to read the private corporation and I'm going to do that separately I think because uh, that's interesting <laughs>